Hi guys, I wanted to show you some pinch exercises using regular old clothespins. These are clothespins that we bought at the dollar store. And so you can get a whole package of them for very cheap, very inexpensive. And this is a great item to have in your therapy tool bag because you can use them in so many different ways. So we actually colored them different colors using markers. And we did that because we wanted to use these to sort items like craft pom-poms or crumbled up colored paper or um, mini erasers, anything little that can match the color. You can also pinch these right onto colored pieces of paper or cardstock, um, index cards. So there's a lot of different ways that you can use these clothespins when they're color coded. It just makes them a lot of fun. You can color them different fun colors like we did, or you could color the whole side a single color and then you know make a matching color on the other side or mix it up. It's really up to you. And this is actually a fun activity for kids to do because they're holding the, crap, the clothespin, coloring with a marker or a colored pencil, and they're really working on coloring in the space and filling in the whole thing. This is a great fine motor strengthening activity just to color these to get started. So the first thing we're going to do is talk about the different pinches that you can use these clothespins to work on. There are four different pinch grasp patterns that we're going to talk about today. The first one is the, it's called the pad to pad pinch. Okay, so pad to pad, we're talking about the pads of the index finger and the thumb. And that looks like when you're holding the clothespin, it looks like the pad of your thumb and the pad of your index finger squeezing to open the clothespin. So this grass pattern, we are using kind of a straight finger and a straight thumb. So that requires a lot of control at the base of the thumb and in the finger here. When you're separating the sides of the hand, you see the fingers on the ulnar side of the, the wrist, which is the pinky and the ring finger, ring fingers, and the middle finger bent down. And then this side of the hand, which is the radial side of the hand, is the one pinching. It's only this finger, the pointer finger, and the thumb. So when you do this, you're strengthening the intrinsic muscles in the palm and you're working on separation of the sides of the hand and a nice round open thumb web space. You don't wanna see a closed thumb web space and using the pointer finger because that is using more of an opposition from the thumb to the side of the finger where you want to see the thumb rotating at the base here. This pad to pad grip is something that we might see in different things like in different functional tasks like picking up small things like beads or Cheerios when babies are little, they're picking up little food pieces. This is one of the first grasps to develop. The, it's also known as the pincer grasp. Um, when we're strengthening and working on this pad to pad grasp, this is one of the beginning grip strengthening activities that you can work on. Okay. The second one I'm going to talk about is kind of a progression from the pad to pad pinch. It's called the tip to tip. Okay, this grip pattern is starting with a similar pad to pad, but you're working with the tip of the thumb and the tip of the pointer finger. You can see when I move from a pad to pad to the tip to tip, that you see more of a round thumb web space. This opens up. That opening in the thumb web space adds more precision and you need this tip to tip grasp to pick up smaller items, to thread a um, needle into, or string into a needle, um, to pick up tiny pieces of paper or you know little specks of um, things on the table. This is a precision grasp. But when we work on the clothespin strengthening, this can um, really bring awareness to that opening in the thumb web space. 
When you see this grasp, you might notice that you see flexion here at the distal joint of the pointer finger and distal joint of the thumb. This is rarely where you're going to see precision activities. So when people are holding a pencil, um, you want to see that nice round opening thumb web space and you can see the, the bend of my thumb and the bend of my pointer finger. Okay, that's the second strengthening grasp. The next one is number three. It starts with a three. Three jaw chuck. Okay, now this one is called a three jaw chuck, jaw chuck because there are three fingers involved. This is kind of a progression. You'll see the pointer, the middle, and the thumb. This grasp is sort of what you would expect with a tripod grasp with holding a pencil or a pen. So you're gonna see the pointer, the middle, and the thumb. When we work on this grasp, strengthening activities, you're also going to work on tucking those fingers in on the ulnar side of the hand and you're going to work on trying to maintain a nice round oval shaped thumb web space. Okay, the next one, this is a functional grasp, which means as soon as I write the name, you probably can picture this. This one's called a key pinch. Okay, that is one way to describe it. Another word is lateral lateral pinch okay the key pinch this one number four is something you see when you're holding a key say you're holding a key to put it into a door a lock to open a lock or you might be holding a coin to put it into a um, vending machine or a bank uh, like a piggy bank, you're pushing the side, the thumb against the side of the pointer finger. So this one has the thumb opposition, but it's to the lateral side of the pointer finger. So this one's a little hard to show. Um, it looks a little awkward from this angle, but you can see that there's separation of the sides of the hand. The precision sides are working on manipulating the object, which is this clothespin and you're pressing just against there. You will see thumb IP joint flexion and you'll see stability down at the base of the thumb, okay? So those are the four pinches that we're, we're going to work on here. And when you do these activities, you can use these clothespins and just work on repetitions with pinching. One thing that I like to use is colored cups and colored paper or colored craft pom-poms. You can pick these, pick those items up with the clothespins and drop them into colored matching cups or containers. Um, one activity to use, the, to use these exercises with that kids really seem to like is something that you probably have had at one point or a time and those are Dum Dum Lollipop wrappers. Kids really seem to like these. So what I'll do is grab a bag of these from the dollar store and unwrap them. Um, or if you know my own kids have used eaten the lollipops, I'll save the wrappers because they're really sturdy. They have like a wax lining and if they get a tear in it, it's, it's okay. It doesn't matter. Um, they kind of have like a cool scent, so this is kind of fun for the kids to use. But what you'll do is use these colorful things and just crumble them up. When you have a child work on crumbling up paper, that's really working on the intrinsic muscles in the hand and strength, strengthening those muscles, um, defining the arches of the hand, and strengthening the fingers as they crumble, crumble those paste papers. You can have them crumble up each of these wrappers, okay? And they're really, they're colorful. They have some nice shades to them. So then you can sort these by colors. You can see they're kind of orange. That one's red, brown, purple. Um, once you have all of these crumbled up, it really works on those hand muscles. 
then you can use your clothespins and pick them up with the different pinches. Okay, so you can ask the child or the student that you're working with to start with the pad to pad pinch and pick them all up. Okay, just have them move them onto a different location or into a cup or something. Grasp and release, that's two repetitions to move each one. Okay, Oop, that one's sliding away. Grasp and release, and then go through it again and work on the next one. We're gonna move to tip to tip. So we'll move it back. Make sure you have a nice round circle. Pick that up, tip to tip, grasp and release. Whoops, that one hopped back. So you have to really press it to open and press it again to open to release it. Okay, next we'll move on to the three jaw chucks. So again, you'll put two fingers on the top and the thumb on the bottom. You wanna make sure that that thumb is opposed with a nice round circle here. You don't wanna see, you don't wanna see a squashed thumb web space. That's really, um, that's not working on the muscles that you want to work on and it's, um, it's just not effective. So you wanna make sure you have that nice round web space and move them back, grasp and release. Okay, and then the last one, the three jaw chuck, remember that one is the thumb against this, or I'm sorry, the key pinch or the lateral pinch. That one's the thumb against the side of the index finger. Grasp and release and put those back again over to the other side. Now, to make this kind of fun for kids, you already got the colorful clothespins that are kind of interesting and different. You've got these fun wrappers that are definitely different and probably not a way that they've used them before. And then another way to make this kind of more engaging is to include um, some kind of gamification. You can have a timer going. How fast can you get these five wrappers into the container um, using the, this, this, joint, this pinch exercise, number one, and put on the timer, mark down the time that they get, and then see if they can move through each of the pinch patterns and beat their time. So that's just one way to work on this ex exercise. Really strengthen those fingers, strengthen those hands, and work on functional grasp patterns. So that's all for today. I will be back with more information and activities to improve hand strength, functional grasp patterns, um, all of our little therapy trip tricks and tips. And hopefully there's something that you like. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments below and I will try my best to get to those. Um, if you've used these different activities before, let us know. Um, if you've ever used Dum Dum wrappers or lollipop wrappers in any way, share that with us. I'd love to hear how you're doing these activities. That's all for now. Bye.